let's continue working on this mini Baja bug project. Now, I was going to start working on figuring out where the gas tank's going to go, but honestly, I can't figure out the best spot for it. There are basically three different spots I can put the gas tank. Two of them are in the front, but I'm honestly not sure if they're going to fit once I get the pedals installed, because that's going to kind of change where my feet are going to go. So I think let's do that first. Let's get the pedals installed for the rear brakes, as well as let's get the controls on the steering wheel for the front brakes, as well as the throttle. Now, I want to add some paneling right here and in here to kind of help, you know, protect my legs from getting splashed if I ever drive this thing to a puddle, which I'm probably going to do. And then I also need to add some type of uh, floor pan along here, and then that'll determine exactly how I do the pedals.
Yeah, so because of the space limitations, I had, I kind of had to do this at a funny angle, but it should hopefully work. Now, remember, these are the rear brakes only, and the reason that there's two of them is, remember, we have a differential in the rear end of this thing, and these are our cutting brakes, or turning brakes, whatever you want to call it. So basically, this one is going to operate that rear tire only, and this one's going to operate that rear tire, so therefore we can hit them independently and have turning brakes or cutting brakes, whatever you want to call it. So I originally wanted to mount this down here to get more leverage on the master cylinder, but when I mocked it up, especially with the funny angle that I had to mount these brake pedals just to make it comfortable for my feet to be able to sit on these, there's just no way that I could get the master cylinder low enough to work with that hole that I drilled down there. So I kind of had to do this, but it's it, it should work. Yeah, and it's still comfortable to sit, I can, and I can easily hit the pedals. Now, next thing we need to do is the hand control. So this is going to be front brakes, and then we have a thumb throttle that we just need to install and, you know, build into the steering wheel. So with a vehicle like this, with these last couple things we need to do, this stuff kind of just takes forever. We still need to do the gas tank, I need to figure out where that's going. We need to do the oil tank, the cover for the CVT. We need to finalize the steering, we need to uh, finish installing the hand controls, and then we need to hook up the brakes and then bleed the brakes, as well as wiring, airbox, radiator, can't forget about radiator, and probably some other things I'm forgetting. So this, we're almost, almost at the point where this vehicle is at the point where we can finally try to get this engine fired up, but these last couple steps kind of just, they, they take forever. It took me two days just to build these pedals. So, yeah, these last couple things kind of just take a long time to do. Now, there are certain things I'm finishing off camera just because they're not really that interesting, like finishing the steering. I got the tie rod mounts onto the spindles finished and fully welded. I also lowered the tie rod mounts on the steering column a little bit lower to hopefully make it to where the steering won't be so sensitive. So next thing is let's work on figuring out where the radiator is going to go. Now obviously it's going to go right here, but I need to figure out how high or how low I'm going to try to mount this thing in the frame. Now obviously the higher I mount this, the better airflow it's going to get, but the more susceptible it is going to be for damage. So I'm kind of thinking about mounting it just a little bit lower in the frame. Also, I do think it's, it looks better being a little bit lower in the frame. And I also want to make sure that once I get the radiator installed and hook up all the radiator lines, that we don't have to take any of that stuff off to be able to take the fiberglass body off. So I want to route all the, fiber, all the radiator lines down 
under here, under the fiberglass to the engine. So therefore, uh, you know, we can leave all that stuff installed and be able to still remove the fiberglass. So, so I'm looking at the placement of this radiator and I'm kind of realizing how it's not really that great because it is really close to where I'm sitting and it's definitely going, you're definitely going to feel that in the summertime when this thing gets really hot, but I can't really move it anywhere else. If I move it further back, it just gets in the way of uh, the CVT, also the radiator fans. I need to make sure that those have enough space in here. I mean, I could move it further back, but I would also have to move it further up. And I just, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I want to get this thing as into the frame as possible so it doesn't look too ridiculous and too sticking out of this thing. But I'm looking at this and it's like, it is so close to where I'm sitting. And I, I, I guarantee in the summertime, you're definitely going to, you're definitely going to feel that unless there's a really good airflow this way. Also, I did think about what if I put a heat shield right here, but then it's like, if I did that, this thing would get zero airflow. So I, I don't think that's the smart idea. I could try and make it to where there's uh, air ducting in the, in the windows on this thing to where it pulls air from the outside and forces it into the radiator right here. And then I can use some type of uh, sheet metal to go around it. But I don't know. It, I mean, I could do that. But it would be kind of a challenge to do because of how much tubing is right here. And I'm not really sure how well the air would be funneled into the radiator. But uh, so yeah, worst case, we can do that if we need to, if this thing is terribly hot uh, when driving this thing and it's just burning in my back. So, but unfortunately, this is the really the only place for the radiator and I, I can't I can't move it further back. I can't move it either higher or lower because then it's just going to get in the way of other things. Now we don't have to modify this radiator that much, which is which is nice because uh, normally on a radiator like this, I have to heavily modify it to get it to work for the, for a setup like this. But we only have to change one thing, and that is the outlet for the radiator on this side. All we have to do is make it bigger and move it further down on the very bottom. Right now it's three quarters. We have to make it one inch and simply move it further down. So that's that should be easy. All right, so we got the radiator installed. Now I'm not ready yet to hook up the radiator hose. Like with most stuff on this thing, we'll do that later. Now, 
I did make a short list of all the fabrication stuff. We still need to do this thing before we can start working on hooking up everything, like the radiator hose, the brake lines, bleeding brakes, wiring, throttle cable, all, all that stuff that takes forever. So we still need to build the gas tank, CVT cover, oil tank, muffler, and air box. Now pretty much the easiest thing on this list is the muffler. Everything else is a lot of cutting and welding aluminum. I'm kind of really anxious to get the gas tank finished, but I honestly, I cannot figure out where, where to put it. I don't know, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out a good spot for a large gas tank. I don't want to build a small gas tank and have limited range with this thing. I could, I don't know, I could just build a small gas tank. There's a lot of spots on this thing for a small gas tank, and then I could put those roto packs on the side. That could, I mean, that would work, so... Also the oil tank, I uh, need, need to figure out where that's going to go. I'm going to try to get that as close to the engine as possible because I believe it's gravity fed. We don't want to put it way in the front and have it struggling to get oil into this engine. So I think let's start working on the CVT cover. So let's, let's get that done. So I think the only way to do this is make the whole bottom portion out of steel so therefore I can just weld it to the frame and then the top portion will be aluminum that will be bolted, that will be able to be bolted off the frame to be able to access the belt and everything. I just have to make sure that I make enough room for the adjustment of this move, being able to move back and forth and up and down to tension the chain and the belt as well as not be in the way of the suspension moving up and down. So. Yeah, this is going to be a challenge because everything is crammed packed in here, so... Yeah, I knew I was pushing my luck a little bit, trying to tip this thing on its side, but it worked for a little bit.
So the bottom is pretty good. That was a little bit tricky trying to get it to fit around the suspension while still having room for the CVT and everything. Now, originally I was planning on having the top for the CVT cover built into the fiberglass and be bolted onto the fiberglass, but the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm realizing that not only would that be harder to build, because we'd also have to, you know, we'd have to build it into the fiberglass, but we'd also have to cover the front of this under the fiberglass, and that's just a little bit more tricky. And we would also, anytime we wanted to remove the fiberglass, we would also have to remove the cover for the CVT. So I almost think the easier way to do it would be to just build one giant shell that just fits over this and gets bolted to the frame, and then I'll cut the fiberglass to fit over it. So this thing is, it's starting to look rather large. Now I can cut a lot of this off on top because I mean the top of the CVT is right there. I mean, look at that. We can cut a lot of this off on top. So what I'm probably gonna do is cut about right there and then angle it in like that. So therefore the piece of plate we put on here is angled inwards, something like that. And it should make it look a little less boxy. this thing together. Yeah, after welding on a bunch of cast aluminum, this is a lot easier.
Yeah. Definitely not the prettiest thing I've ever made. It kind of looks like a giant ugly snail, but hopefully, hopefully once this thing's done, it won't look so, I, I, I may paint this black to try and have it blend in. Cause I honestly don't like the look of this. It kind of looks it kind of looks ugly, and I kind of wish I th I came up with a better way to make this thing look not so ugly. But I I do hope that I'm not I'm not gonna regret welding all this all the bottom panels, just welding them in place. The reason I try to make uh, every panel that I build on a vehicle like this, I try to make them all removable because it makes it a heck of a lot easier to work on stuff, to service it, to you know, fix it or, you know, just work on it when you can remove all the paneling. But down here, there's not really that much stuff I need to work on. So hopefully I'm not going to regret welding those in place. So now I know this CVT cover, it's not going to protect this belt if we submerge this thing, but it's, I'm mainly just trying to make it to where it will protect the belt from any water getting splashed from the tires. If we drive it, when we drive, not if, when we drive this thing to a puddle, so I'm just trying to make it to where it's because the belts like these don't like to get wet. I don't want to have belt slipping every time I drive this thing through a puddle. So hopefully this mostly protects the belt from water getting splashed from the tires. Now, yeah, we are slowly getting progress done on this thing. We got the radiator installed. We got the CVT belt cover installed and finished. We got the pedals for the rear brakes finished. We got the steering finished. The uh, controls and the steering wheel and the floor pan for this thing is now finished. So we are slowly, slowly getting progress done on this thing. But I guess for now, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.